Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Where every day is casual Friday. That means Monday is casual Monday. Tuesday, casual Tuesday. Wednesday, casual hump day. Thursday, casual Thurs. That's what we call it. And Friday, casual Shabbat. The Majority Report with Sam Cedar. It is Friday, November 18th, 2022. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, Heather Parton, or the blogger you may know as Digby with the blog Hullabaloo. Also on the program today, R.M. Brown from the YouTube channel called R.M. Brown. Is that what it is, Bradley? It is? Okay. Um, also on the program today, Nancy Pelosi steps down from House leadership, along with Steny Hoyer, James Clyburn. Meanwhile, Hakeem Jeffries, Catherine Clark, Pete Aguilera, Aguilar, announce their run to succeed with her, Art the Progressives. (laughs) Meanwhile, Twitter engineers... And just about every other position uh, quit on Moss as Elon Musk tries to prove just how monumentally stupid he is. And mission accomplished. Biden administration now looking to protect Saudi prince from any legal jeopardy resulting in his ordering the killing of the Washington Post uh, journalist Khashoggi. Republican majority now stands at 2018 to 2012. It's really definitely not uh, the Democrats are going to pick up one royal race because there's two Democrats running in California. There are four races extant. One of them is uh, the Boebert race in Colorado going to a recount. More on that in a bit. The DOJ to bring student loan debt relief fight to the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, the Biden administration loosens bankruptcy laws to allow uh, debt discharge for said loans in bankruptcy coming full circle because the difficulty was there initially because of Joe Biden. (laughs) There's always time to make up for uh, past mistakes. May you live long enough to correct those errors from your youth. Or not so much youth, but like late in life. (laughs) Starbuck workers at close to 100 locations went on strike yesterday across the country. Carrie Lake still refusing to concede to reality. Florida judge blocks uh, Ron DeSantis' anti-woke law, calls it dystopian. Alabama botches another execution. All this and more on today's Majority Report. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is a casual Friday. Uh, Emma Viglin is here. And Emma, uh, you, you you rightly predicted that the lack of collar that I am, I'm wearing today uh, would be, um, you know, ca- cause quite a stir. Yeah. And it has. I've never seen this before. Yes, you have. It's happened one other time. Okay. <laughs> it's jar- it's jarring. I mean, have you ever worn like a sweater, a crew neck sweater on the show? I have worn a crew neck sweater on the show, but with a collar. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, no, I, I have I have on one other occasion, I believe, worn a non collared shirt mm. on this program, and uh, what happened today was was a tough night, a tough morning. One of the children was uh, being difficult 
and I, my collared shirt was very wrinkled. And I'm like, I'm not going to deal with this. I don't even know how to deal with it, really. I mm -hmm. know that it involves an iron in some way, and I'm not going to go there. And then I'm like, it's cold out, and I don't have a collared long sleeve shirt, which I'm going to remedy, folks. I'm in the market for that now. Uh, and I was just like, you updated. know what? Yeah. Yeah. Screw are knocking down our door. Yeah. <laughs> Screw it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let loose today. Yeah. And um, it it feels a little weird to be so naked. Uh, when around, I walked into the area. office, saw you without a collar. You're also not wearing pants. <laughs> yeah. I never wear pants. That's not. No. It was like seeing like all the furniture on the ceiling, that kind of deal. I was yeah. like, yeah, this is really, really jarring. We're, we need designers, as Matt said, knocking down the door here to dress you. You know, like for a red carpet. It's everyone. Must be Sam stylist. Everyone, yeah, everyone wants to provide you with this this uh, soft collared long sleeve. We'll see. Get in now, folks, for the free promo. Yep, there you go. Well, we'll see. Um, uh, we should also say, I mean, a couple of things in the headlines I just wanted to, re you know, Alabama uh, screwed up another execution. It's really only one of many reasons why we should not be executing people. You would imagine that, you know, this would be the fundamental argument that all libertarians would make right because they will cry for uh for for eternity that the monopoly of power that forces them to um to pay taxes but the idea that the state would kill in a moment that had really nothing to do with protecting its citizens i mean let's be clear the, the 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 guy who was on um was on death row in Alabama I think he's been there for over 20 years uh, and maybe even 30 and it was a 1988 murder and so yeah 34 wow. 34 years don't know when he went to prison but but I mean at least 30 years so this person is not a threat to society I mean we can have we can have a, a, a separate conversation about whether Anybody should be in prison for 34 years. But in terms of like uh, uh, of the state taking the life of an individual who in no way could possibly represent a threat to society because they're locked up in a prison. Um, I, in my estimation, that is uh, it's not even question. I mean, I, I don't like to set things in terms of like morality. Um, just because I don't, I don't subscribe to that idea in terms of like, you know, when, when it comes to, to politics, but you are, um, you're essentially announcing that cold blooded killing is okay. It's just a question of now we're going to have a negotiation under what terms. And that becomes, uh, I think r really problematic because terms can change. And, you, and they do, you know, depending on what state you live in. And uh, but also, like, you know, once you say that cold blooded murder. Or killing, if you if you don't uh, cold blooded killing. Is OK. Under certain circumstances, you know, it really just becomes a negotiation as to what those circumstances are. And maybe in some instances they are just like, I don't like that person. I mean, and and it's a there's an attempt to sanitize it with say lethal injection, uh, and you know, no more firing squads, no more public hangings, but like it's just as violent. It's still cold blooded murder, and in fact, when you read about the details of what people go through with lethal injection as well, uh, there there sometimes has to be a paralyzing agent so that they don't writhe around in pain. It makes it less it. They are literally try paralyzing them so the people watching don't see that this I, person is being murdered in front of your eyes. I think if we're going to have state executions, they should be televised. Yep. And uh, we can we can hide the identity of this person. Uh, we can blur out maybe their face. Um, but and maybe we give uh, the, um, the the person to be executed the option. Do you want this televised? And we should, we, people, if we're going to kill in cold-blooded uh, fashion like this, w we should own it as a society and see how long uh, we can stomach it. I, I, I know a lot of people in this country can. 
frankly. Um, but I, I just wanted to say that because, you know, I didn't want anybody to get the impression that I think like, you know, the, the problem here was that they failed uh, to successfully uh, kill this person in their first try. The problem is, is that that's how effed up of a society we have in my estimation, but uh, in killing people. But um, let's move on to this story about Nancy Pelosi. In fact, you know what? Let's wait. We'll show this with, uh, we'll start this with uh, Heather uh, because this is, um, I don't know if, uh, if Nancy Pelosi stepping down is necessarily a surprise news based upon the loss of uh, control of the House. She did promise in 2019 that she would not run, she would not serve in the leadership in four years uh, after winning it in 2019. And uh, so, or, or, you know, winning it in late 2018, I guess. Um, and so uh, here we are. But we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. A um, couple of words from our sponsors today. One of them being sunsetlakesebeday.com. Uh, just a reminder, you know, those last three letters there, got to say them like that because of, uh, because of uh, the authoritarian nature <laughs> of our over. society. It's <laughs> like, uh, this is what Orwell talked about. If only Winston Smith knew about, say, letters slightly differently in front of the screen that monitors you. There you go. Yeah, exactly. If only he understood that it was just going to be, uh, they were going to write it out, and that's the way they were going to, there was just some, like, AI was going to do it. Yeah. Didn't know how sneaky you could be. Sunsetlikesabaday.com. Uh, use the coupon code. Oh, that's my dumb speaker. Uh, use the code uh, left is best. You will get 20% off. You will get 20% off a whole host of their products. Um, many of which I use over the course of the week. I think I use, uh, I use the, uh, tincture. And I guess if I want to get technical about it, sometimes I switch up the flavors and mm -hmm. I switch up the dosage. You can get them from like 750 mil, 3000 mil, uh, 6,000 mil, just, uh, it, it deals with how much strength you want in the, the dropper. Uh, and then, um, I, I know, uh, at one point this week, uh, weekend, probably I may have a pre-rolled, uh, seven day, um, little, um, uh, smokable. Um, and I also, uh, earlier this week had a gummy and I have three choices on the gummies. I've got the Sebade sour ones. Mm -hmm. I got the Sebade with melatonin, and I got the Sebade with the THC. Mm -hmm. As uh, just a tiny bit of THC, which actually you feel. I mean, if you're yeah. if you're someone like myself, it doesn't get uh, you know crazy. I'm not rolled up in a ball on the couch, uh, but uh, I it, it certainly have some fun. And also, there's like and on the weekend, I'll have a Sebade coffee. Uh, I can't, it really has become blend. a lifestyle for yeah. me now. I, um, I have that tincture every night with and, the melatonin. And, um, and so, uh, and all of their products are third party tested, high quality. They, uh, great farming practices. They practice regenerative farming, uh, with, uh, under the auspices of university of Vermont. They use integrated pest management. They do not use pesticides. Um, they also have great business practices. They pay uh, their employees $20 a minimum wage. And uh, most of the company is employee owned as it is, you know, as it is. Uh, on top of which, they're also movement partners. They have donated uh, thousands of dollars over the years to things like Planned Parenthood most recently, but also uh, food pantries and uh, strike funds and Innocence Project, uh, Refugee Resettlement, just a great company all around, great products. Check it out, sunsetlakesebaday.com. Left is best. We'll get you 20% off. They came up with that coupon code. I love that stuff. Honestly, it's, it's fantastic. Um, also, uh, another sponsor of ours today, I mentioned this the other day. I stopped uh, shaving on the reg uh, at the beginning of this year, been uh, bearding it. I only have one little area, which to shave. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, I, I, don't, I don't need a subscription service. That's too much. Uh, I don't want, uh, you know, disposables because why do I want to add plastic? And it's been an issue. Uh, and then these guys show up and it's great. 
It is um, Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Um, this is really fantastic. I mean, it, because it, it, it deals with both those problems. You don't need a subscription for this. Once you buy the razor, you have paid for it. End of story. Your ability to buy razors, because you use those um, old style single uh, blade uh, razors, literally like five bucks for the year. Wow. And um, the, the discomfort that uh, men and women experience with disposable shavers, apparently, is due to the blade extending too far, and it causes the blade to wobble freely. Apparently, razor blades are sort of like uh, diving boards. And if it's longer and it's unsupported, more wobble. And then you get more nicks, you get more cuts, get more scrapes. So uh, it's not that a bad shave is a blade problem. It's an extension problem. And so uh, Henson, using aerospace-grade CNC machines, which I've been told is what? A computer something notch computer computer numerical control yeah no that's what i meant and uh hence makes uh metal razors that extend just 0. 0.0013 inches or less than the thickness of a human hair that means secure and stable blade with vibration free shave hmm. and it gets better uh the razor has built-in channels down here at the bottom i don't know if you can see that probably not um which allows you to evacuate hair and cream which makes clogging virtually impossible no more scraping hair out of your razors with the thumb the, and here's the thing, and I, I don't know, I got to dig into this a little bit more, but they have all this machinery to build these precision um, uh, pieces of, of metal, essentially, like this. I don't know if this is metal or aluminum. And um, so they want to be the best razor. They don't need to be the best razor company. They're, do, you know, they're putting this out, and uh, that means you buy it once, and you're done. And the single blade, like I'd heard good things about that. It's like, it's kind of like your own personal barber shop, right? Yep. Where they can do it yep. for you. And because it's so tight, you're getting a very tight shave. There. If you're a conservative, you'd be selling it as very masculine, traditional. It's very masculine and it's very, cons uh, you know, uh, traditional. And, um, uh, but there's no plastic, there's no subscriptions, there's no proprietary blades, there's no planned obsolescence. You get a box of, Single-use blades, like these things, stainless steel, single blade. This is it right here. This is going to take me, there's 100 blades in here. This is going to take me through the, well, it, I mean, obviously it's going to take me through the year because I'm just shaving this like literally one below part. But uh, it will take you through the year. The Henson razor works with standard dual-edge blades. It gives you an old-school straight razor shave with the benefits of new-school technology. Once you own a Henson razor, like I say, it's only about 3 to $5 a year to replace the blades. They're giving my audience a two-year supply of blades for free. Just go to hensonshaving.com slash majority. That's H-E-N-S-O-N shaving.com slash majority. Add a razor and a 100-pack of blades for your cart. Then enter the code majority to get the blades for free. The link is in the description. This is a great gift uh, for the holidays because you give it and it's done. The, it, no more after that. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking to Digby. And just a reminder, it is your... Oh, there's another thing. It's your support that makes the show possible. You can become a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. But right now, the iOS app, I believe, is, is available now in the store, the updated version. Maybe it might take another 20, uh, 25 minutes, but it is great. Go check it out. You can go to majorityapp.com, download the iOS app, you can also get the Android app for free, but the iOS app has been updated. The Android app comes next, and that's going to come a lot quicker because we've figured out all the things we want it. It you can it has all the links to all of our different social media, including the Discord. That much more important right now uh, in the wake of uh, Twitter uh, on the brink of implosion. Hmm. Um, a lot of people are saying it may not may not still be standing over the weekend because. Oof. They fired the guy with the with the keys to get into the office. Literally. I know. It's insane. Unbelievable. But um, so check out the app, majorityapp.com. Uh, you can sign up for the AM Quickie through there. It's great. Check it out. 
Uh, We'll be right back after this break. We are back. Sam Cedar, Emma Vigland on the Majority Report joining us. It's always a pleasure to welcome to the show Heather Parton. You may know her as a columnist at Salam.com, or maybe you have known her uh, for like 20 years, like I have. Um, like uh, about 19, right? Uh, maybe it is. Uh, Coming up on 20, actually. Hullabaloo uh, Digby uh, at the, the blog Hullabaloo. Do we have Digby's song? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, boy. Everybody trying. asleep asleep at the wheel. I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> has it been, has it, uh, is it almost 20, 20 years? 20 years in January, yeah. Okay, yeah, right. 2003. It was yeah. in the, I the remember, right in the run up to the Iraq war. That's right. Uh, and I was reading Atrios, and he was saying, uh, he started saying what Digby said. Yep. Are you ready for some pee Uh, there we go. Uh, Heather uh, Parton, there's your theme song. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Let's <laughs> start pleasure. Let's start with this. This is, um, this is pretty big news. Um, and I don't, uh, there was definitely some question about it. I don't think it was a, you know, I don't think it was a fait accompli. And it certainly was, um, I think, somewhat contingent upon how the Democrats did in this past election. Um, here is, uh, Nancy Pelosi on the floor of the house yesterday. Scripture teaches us that for everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. My friends, no matter what title you all, my colleagues have bestowed upon me, speaker, leader, whip, there is no greater official honor for me than to stand on this floor and to speak for the people of San Francisco. This I will continue to do as a member of the House, speaking for the people of San Francisco, serving the great state of California, and defending our Constitution. And with great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek re-election to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. And I'm grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility. Madam Speaker, standing here today, I'm endlessly grateful for all of life's blessings. Uh, there it is. And so, um, I, I mean, my first response is like, you know, good for her. Uh, and maybe that can be uh, sort of a, 
a little bit of a hint for some of her colleagues in various positions around uh, the, the Capitol building. Um, well, Steny Hoyer took uh, took note and is not going, is Steny stepping Hoyer, away as well. Clyburn also, too. And yeah. Clyburn as well. Um, I have some issues with, um, you know, the sort of the, the anointing of their followers as if this was a... Um, you know, some type of royal ascension uh, type of situation. We'll talk about that in a moment. But what what are your thoughts, Heather? Well, I think she had to do it. I mean, I, I agree with you that it was really con probably contingent on whether or not they kept the House with, you know, that narrow majority that was going to go either way. Had it stayed that way, I think she might have stayed for another two years to manage that very narrow majority, which is very difficult as we're going to watch with some glee as Kevin McCarthy attempts to do it. And I don't think he has nearly the skill. Uh, well, I know he has, does not have anywhere near the skill that Nancy Pelosi does. So um, she pro she may w very well have just waited to find that out. It certainly seems that way, but it's time. I mean, we knew that. I had kind of expected her to to uh, to retire at in 2020. Um, and if they'd had a larger majority, I think it might've happened then. Uh, she's been grooming this, you know, Hakeem Jeffries and this, this crew for a while. Um, and, you know, what you say is true. I, I find the anointing to be rather bizarre, frankly. I don't understand, you know, this is, it's a, the party's half and half. There's plenty of new blood in there. I'm a little surprised that I haven't heard more from other Democratic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, other Democrats in the Progressive Caucus or maybe even Blue Dogs, you know, from the Midwest or something, you know, saying, hey, you know, we, we have a right to do this, too. And more of a battle for the for the leadership. And it may still happen. I mean, this is still, you know, early days and everyone's basking in the tributes to, to Pelosi and maybe just trying to be you know, decent about it for the moment, and maybe the knives will come out soon. But I, I really w am surprised. I, I, I knew that Jeffries was in line to be speaker, and I knew that she, he was the choice of the uh, of of the Pelosi, you know, uh, leadership group. But I didn't think everybody else assumed that. <laughs> you know, I thought right. there were a bunch of other people who were thinking that too. So we'll we'll wait and see what happens there. But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of a battle than this. They may win in the end. Um, but there's no margin in Democrats keeping it together at the moment. They can afford a fight on this. They but, don't. But they, him, I mean, him different? getting out ahead of it is a massive advantage. I mean, and they already have this kind of like three person ticket of who is going. They're all banding together. It's uh, Catherine. Um, what, what's Clark? Her? Catherine Clark, Clark. and uh, yeah, right uh, from Massachusetts. <laughs> and 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 you know. That's what's most concerning to me here is that you hear rumblings like, oh, you know, Jayapal might consider running now. And it's like, why haven't the progressives had a plan on this front from the get go? Because everyone has known that Hakeem Jeffries was being groomed for this position and now he has a, a head start. And I feel like once that narrative is written and those connections are made... Now we have another speaker of the House who might even be more hostile to the left than Nancy Pelosi. I mean, he worked with Josh Gottheimer on that true blue pack or real blue or whatever the hell that thing is, which was explicitly designed to make sure that progressives were not challenging incumbents. And so that's like that is quite concerning to me, at least. Well, I think it's concerning to a lot of progressives. I mean, Hakeem Jeffries is not a favorite of progressives and, and never has been. I mean, he 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 is a member of the Progressive Caucus, as is Catherine Clark. Um, and the third in line, Pete Aguilar, he's downright almost conservative. I mean, he's really not much of a, he's from California, but he's kind of down from my area here. And I can tell you but that progressives around here don't consider him a particular ally. So, you know, you have, um, you know, these, th these three. Now, keep in mind that the main skill of a, of a speaker and a leadership group like this is fundraising. Mm. <laughs> that is what they do. And that is what they are known for. And that is how they, they get their way. Na Nancy Pelosi was incredibly skilled at that and had other skills to go along with it. I mean, Kevin McCarthy's a great fundraiser, but that doesn't mean he's going to be able to to run that fractious caucus that he's got now. But but that's you know, that's how they prove themselves to get into leadership. And I don't know about the, you know, the progressives. Like I think we all thought that maybe Prime Milla would would run. I mean, maybe that letter, that ill-considered letter that they sent out a couple months ago 
seems to have maybe, you know, cast a pall a little bit on her. I don't know if that's, if that anybody's still thinking that, but that's my impression. Um, but that shouldn't mean anything. I mean, she's still the, the, the speak, the spokesperson for the progressives, I think in the house. And she's shown great skill, I think, in wrangling that group and wrangling her people to kind of, you know, try and maintain some, you know, integrity and in all these negotiations while at the same time exercising their power to, you know, to get some things. So I think she's shown some great skill. Maybe she will run. I mean, uh, may maybe that's going to happen. I don't know. But you're absolutely right that these guys getting out in front like this with the, you know, imprimatur of the, the queen and her court is, <laughs> you know, a huge advantage. huge advantage. I mean, you know, yeah, it's huge. Uh, you know, and, and the, the, the only upside, and we, you know, we had talked about this. I know that you and I had talked about it in 2020. Maybe it was in the run up uh, to her, um, in the run up to uh, her, the 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 democrats uh you know in the run uh, maybe in the wake of the 2020 election or even in the run up to the uh, uh, 2020 election when tim ryan was starting to contemplate yeah. to challenge her and and we should say you know you you can look over and what's happened with the republicans the freedom caucus is probably four 10 times the size of, of let's say the squad at this point, maybe, maybe it's going to be less now with new people coming in, but there's probably at least 50 members I of the freedom caucus. More. I and, think it's more now. And, and, and the, the, the distance between the freedom caucus and the rest of the Republican party has narrowed, I think over the past, you know, five or six years, oh, absolutely. frankly. Um, and they were unable to unseat McCarthy. And so, you know, the 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 power disparity is still an issue the thing that i liked about tim ryan perhaps challenging pelosi was that like he clearly and and i don't think it's quite there in the same way with hakeem jeffries because there's an assumption because he's a member of the congressional progressive caucus he's a member of obviously the the congressional black caucus as well there's there is a sort of i think a misapprehension as to where his politics lie uh, with, and it's, um, and I think there may be a benefit to having someone like a, a Tim Ryan, let's say, because then the progressive caucus is, is, is at odds with that person. And one of the problems that was difficult, I think with Nancy Pelosi was that really, you know, her positions were, um, were in, in many respects, pretty conservative. Um, relative to someone who identified as a progressive, right? She was a member of the Progressive Caucus when she first got in from San Francisco, and we you know we hear about San Francisco politics, and it's sort of supposed to make it seem like they're you know everybody's a radical out there. Um, and I think in some ways that inhibited the ability of progressives to challenge her, because ostensibly it was like, why are you going after one of your own? And there's almost some more freedom to uh, openly challenge somebody where the presumption is they're from different wings of the party. And it, they're clearly from different wings of the party. And setting that up becomes helpful in that respect because you don't look like you're attacking one of your own. Now, none of this is really going to be too, too relevant for the first two years, right? Because there's no legislation that's passing. That's right. That's mm -hmm. not happening. And um, but really, this is about setting it up for a time in the future. Nancy Pelosi has been in that position. Uh, the the leader of the 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 Democrats in the uh, in the House for at least 16 years. Right. And so that's that's a long time. And Hakeem Jeffries could be that guy for a long time. And, and you don't want him there. If you get into a position where you have control of the Senate again and you have a president, because those bodies are actually moving more to the left, it seems to me, at a pace that is faster than the House. Um, and I don't know if you you've that is that is your assessment of it as well. But the Senate, you know, 10 years ago, the Senate was a much more conservative place for Democrats. Oh, Absolutely. I would argue even the presidency, regardless of what's in their hearts or not, Joe Biden, his positions are to the left of Barack mm -hmm. Obama's. 
It's not to be confused with him being, you know, uh, AOC, but his positions are to the left because the, the Democratic Party, the Democratic voters are to the left of where they were, I think, also 10 years ago. And but the House does not necessarily reflect that in the same way. We're seeing the, 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 the sort of the squad and squad adjacent growing, but the, 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 the center of the House still feels pretty conservative to me. Well, I think you're right. I hadn't thought about that, actually. I hadn't really seen that, you know, sort of unique comparison of where the House is compared to where I think I agree with you about the party and very much about the Senate. I mean, 10 years ago, Joe Manchin would not have been alone out there. There would have been a whole group standing behind him. Now, there were some whispering in his ear, some conservative Democrats, more conservative Democrats, who were, but they were up front. And they, 10 years ago, they were more than willing to just step out and, you know, pump their fists and, and say, you know, that we're Joe we Manchin would be behind here. them. You would yeah, be in the I next mean, row of those people who are, who are that's right. fighting that fight. That's right. And I mean, you know, you go back to the 90s and most of the caucus was like that, the, the Democratic caucus in the Senate. It was a much more conservative body then, which is very interesting. And the, and the fact that the House is seeming, you know, like there's a lot of things in the House that's symbolic, right? I mean, and especially in the Democratic caucus. I mean, and you have Jeffries there. He'll be the first black speaker of the House, which is very meaningful. Um, and he's also a, you know, a, an ostensible member of the Progressive Caucus and the Congressional Black Caucus, mm -hmm. both of which are presumed to be progressive. Um, so, you know, he gets that, that, you know, like what you're saying is true. He is not a particularly progressive guy. He, he really isn't. He's a very kind of, you know, corporate establishment, friendly. corporate friendly mover and shaker type more than a more than an ideological uh, progressive. So, but he has all the sort of, you know, identifiers that will make people feel comfortable. A lot of people feel comfortable. Well, you know, he's one of us. I don't even know how they feel about that in the, in the house itself. I s assume that the more sophisticated ones understand this very well, but they're, they're, you know, let's just put it this way. A lot of members of the house of representatives aren't particularly sophisticated. So there may be plenty of them there who don't really understand this dynamic and are just basically going, Hey, you know, go Hakeem, you're good guys from New York to, you right. know, I mean, there are a lot of things about him that sort of give that impression. And you're right, though. I mean, on an ideological basis, it's much it has moved much less to the left. And I would maybe even argue that the progressives in the House have become much more. Um, how shall I put this? You know, much more willing to play the game than they used to be. They're 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 less willing to go up against the, as we're seeing maybe with, you know, as, as, as Emma points out, you know, this kind of, you know, why aren't they fighting harder on this speakership? There are a lot of them. And yet they they seem at this moment to be going along to get along. So you're seeing a lot more of that. It's very interesting. We'll have to watch how this unfolds over the next two years. Cause it's going to, as you say, the next two years are gone. I mean, legislatively speaking, I mean, there's nothing there that they'll, they'll be, you know, attending, investigation hearings uh, and that's about it you know i mean that's that's what they'll be doing and there'll be a fight over the debt ceiling it appears that they don't have the votes in the senate to raise the debt ceiling in the in the lame duck which is a nightmare um yep. but there will be there will be you know various things that they do but for the most part the democrats have nothing to to do for the next two years other than just kind of hold back the tide to the best as best they can so we won't know but it's going to be vitally important for the future and i don't know if anybody's really seeing the um you know the kind of roadblocks that are being put out there for for the progressive project um you know it, that that question of 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 how the the progressives are positioning themselves in the house. I don't know if it's, I, I, I think that's, that is very much, it seems to me a story in development, right? Like, like I think there was a conscious decision at one point for, I think there's two things going on. I think there's like an attempt within the, the congressional progressive caucus to solidify its power. And I would not be surprised if, they get to a point where they start to kick people out mm. and say that we're actually going to, there's a membership requirement here and it's not just like whatever, 4,000 bucks, you know, in right, fundraising right. that, that it is, we need your votes on this, this, and this. 
Yeah. And 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 that's that's going to be our membership requirements, essentially our qualifications. We're going to put some litmus tests on there so that we move. Uh, we have a little bit more nimbleness in terms of way we move. We may be smaller, but we'll be more uh, cohesive. Um, simultaneously, I think that like you know we saw with the the Build Back Better uh, you know machinations that there's also an attempt. And I think we've seen some of this from from AOC on some level to sort of build those like bridges, because I think, you know, a lot of these people are probably less ideological than we imagine on the on the sort of the, the more conservative end of the Democrat. I think they I think they they are conservative in the sense that w within the context of the Democratic Party, they are corporatist within the context of the Democratic Party. But I don't think they're married to that as much as it is like they just think that's normal and that's where their money comes from. Yeah. And I think that there, you know, my sense in talking, we've had a couple of conversations with Ilhan Omar and and and, and one with AOC and, and things that I have read. They're, they, I don't know if their strategy is right or wrong, but I there it's very clear to me that they they have some type of strategy and and that it does feel at one point there was a decision to be made that was like we're gonna we're gonna start to try and build and exercise power. And that's not necessarily the same thing as making a public fight all the time. And I think on some level, you know, we saw that transition a little bit with Bernie Sanders um, as he got where he found himself in a position like, well, he had legitimate power. There started to be a shift in the way that he approached things. It, it was he was no longer the conscience of the of the House, you know, which is what I think right. he was referred to uh, for the first you know, 10, 15 Ooh. years he was in there, because now it could just be more than a conscience. He could actually be part of the brain that makes the arms and legs move. <laughs> and and so uh, and, and sometimes that's a trade off uh, and, and it doesn't appear to be as public. I, this is all sort of speculation on my part. And I don't think we're going to know the answer to these questions, you know, for some time. Uh, one wonders, like, you know, um, you know, if there is because if we've known that Jeffries has been the guy for at least if uh, you know since at least crowley uh went mm. down then they've known and so you know I, I, it's almost insane to think about it but a lot of this stuff is like personal relationships and oh for sure uh jamal bowman came out very early and supported hakeem jeffries and mm -hmm. i just don't think that there is <clears throat> it's not because they're aligned uh, in terms of like, you know, where they, you know, with their voting records or not, you know, or, or were they aligned like in terms of their positions, I guess. Um, and so it, it, it could be interesting, um, you know, if this is like, if there is a, a, a greater amount of practicality uh, associated with uh, these folks, you know, you got people think like, there's... go ahead. I, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, when I listen to AOC and Elon Omar, both of them, it's interesting that you bring them up because I think they are the two that are sort of the the bellwethers of the where the progressives are and are going. It, you know, the the real progressives, uh, not the ones that just sign on with the four thousand dollar checks. And I sense a much greater level of sophistication in the way that they're approaching this than you know, which is natural, right? I mean, they came in, they came in with a, you know, with a certain mandate of progressivism and they are, they started to learn, they're both very smart and started to learn how the levers of power work and started to understand how to do that. I don't think you really get that until you're there, right? I mean, it did takes, it takes I, I will some say exposure. This. People forget Ilhan Omar was um, in the leadership in the Minnesota oh, House. That's right. right? Yeah, and so right. in the Minnesota house, I mean, so she, she had a sense of this stuff, I think going in mm -hmm. and, um, it, you know, I, I think AOC is just, I think, you know, uh, incredibly bright and is really, uh, has picked up on this and I think has, you know, learned through a little bit trial and error too. Uh, but yeah, I think they're, they're in there and they're, this is a long-term plan, I think. Well, I think so, too. And I think that, the, uh, you know, to me, you know, that this is where the real 
the future is, is in this particular group, I don't mean specifically the squad, but people, you know, of that generation of politicians that came into, into office. And, and I think that they have, they have learned, uh, you know, and not just from looking at the, at the Democrats, they've learned from watching the Republicans as well. I mean, you can see, we can talk about them too, which is an even more interesting yeah. leadership study. <laughs> it's, um, you know, um, but they, they I, I do, I, I have some, I, I mean, I'm very, very interested in seeing what AOC, Elon, and the rest of that crew end up doing, because I'm, I'm watching exactly what you describe, and and I'm I'm very intrigued by what I'm seeing there, because I think it could be a very interesting thing for us if uh, if it carries on. Because I did so far, I have a lot of trust in their integrity. I haven't seen, you know, any kind of real you know, the usual sort of compromises on character that you tend to see in politics. So, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful on that count. Let's talk about the, the Republicans. Um, there's a, a, a really open fight in the, 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 the Senate. I mean, it appears that McConnell has won it. Um, again, it's like one of those situations like, okay, they're out of power anyways. I guess there's there's some more like parliamentarian tricks and this and that. And I think that may to be the, the Senate minority leader, particularly with a 51 or 50, uh, you know, 50, 50 tie or 51, 49. I think that has a lot more relevance maybe than it does in the house because you know, there are the, the, the parliamentary procedure there is, is for whatever reason is, is sort of like a ascendant and ascendant value. Um, and, and and Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are still in the Senate, so yeah, it has relevance for sure. Um, and in the House, I mean, give us a sense of what you think we're going to see in the House. It is a train wreck. I mean, it is going to be a severe train wreck. I mean, I would just remind everybody, Kevin McCarthy first ran for Speaker back in 2015 after John Boehner who would, you know, a highly experienced uh, congressional leader flamed out trying to deal with the Freedom Caucus. And he made a deal to continue to, <laughs> to continue the government uh, with the Democrats, with the Obama administration, and the Freedom Caucus went nuts. And he ended up having to resign over all of that because the Freedom Caucus basically made, made his life a living hell. And next in line was Kevin McCarthy. This is back in 2015. And we should just say, by living hell, like this guy, he couldn't even get, he couldn't even get five minutes to have a drink at like 11 in the morning. Nothing. I mean, you know, he couldn't even stop for a ciggy on his way in anymore. It was just, (laughs) it was a nightmare for him. Um, But it really was, they, they, the Freedom Caucus of those days, it's the Tea Party Caucus, we called them back then. Now they're MAGA Caucus, but it's the same thing, you know, same people, same, same tactics. Um, So Kevin McCarthy was coming up and he was the guy. I mean, he was the guy who was supposed to do it. And, you know, he is a prodigious fundraiser and he's been planning this for a long time. And he this is his thing. I mean, he was he has, you know, great ambition to be the Speaker of the House. So but he comes out and he says this stupid thing. There were the Benghazi hearings were going on and he came out and went before the cameras and said, well, you know, we did these these Benghazi hearings to bring down Hillary Clinton's numbers and it's working. And at that time, everybody went, oh, my God. God, are you telling me that they did this for political purposes? No, say it isn't so. And Kevin was marched out of the out of the line to be to be speaker, and pa- they went and begged Paul Ryan to do it instead. Now, obviously, times have changed <laughs> because if Kevin McCarthy said something like that today, everybody go, yeah. And anyway, so you know, <laughs> when's the Hunter Biden investigation starting? You know, and nobody would even think about that, but. Well, I, wh- one thing that strikes me about that is, A, you're right that nobody would blink an eye. But we should also say that I feel like this was also <laughs> a similar thing that they did with Trent Lott, right? Which was, uh, you know, Trent Lott had said something, I think it was, it was it at Strom Thurmond's uh, birthday party? If only he'd have won, yeah. If he only had won and, and, and he, it, Strom Thurmond had run basically on this like white nationalist uh, ticket uh, back, I can't remember the, the specific details. 48, I think. Yeah, and, and, and it, it was clearly people wanted Trent Lott out in the Republican party. So they, they, they gin this up. I mean, I, I think I remember correctly and the, you know, we're talking 15 years ago, 16 years ago, I think, uh, um, 
uh, Josh Marshall had sort of tracked where that first sort of story came out and came out in the right wing press. And they obviously didn't care, but it was a way that they were going to take out uh, Trent Lott. And I have a feeling that's what happened with McCarthy as well. Yeah, um, that could be. But but with that said, I don't think the press would bite in the same way at that bait that they what did then because... Like, you know, like, can we stop pretending that Benghazi was anything other than a, you know, they had six hearings. And so, and this is relevant. This change is relevant, I think, in terms it's of huge. what's going to happen over the next two years. Because you you wrote a piece, uh, I think it was today in, in Salon.com, about Marjor Marjorie Taylor yeah. Greene is, she's going to have a, a, like, not only her own personal portfolio, but She's going to be sort of like directing a certain portion of what goes on in this house. And let's be clear, no legislation whatsoever. They're not even going to try. I don't even think they're going to even try. Nothing. And uh, it is all going to be hearings, 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 hearings. And um, and they're going to be wall to wall Hunter Biden hearings. And this, I think, is going to end up being a problem for the Republicans in two different ways. One it's just not a very, like, it is, the, like, you know, Benghazi at least was sort of like about the government, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Hunter Walker is like, Biden. Biden. excuse me, uh, Hunter Walker, Hunter Biden, all the things that they're examining happened when Joe Biden was out of office. Yeah, and like, it's, it's and their their accusations of him trading on his father's name. It's like Trump's about to be running. I mean, like I know <laughs> that they're fairly immune from kind of the hypocrisy angle, but I also think that people generally have a distaste for the Hunter Biden story because of how slimy it is. The fact that all this information was taken from a laptop that he seemed to have put out for repair, and the fact that all they can find with Biden in it is him saying, I love you and I want you to get help. Like, I think most just casual people observing the story are going to be like, I know someone with addiction. The, 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 this is mean. This is like, the, you know what this re reminds me of? Like, after that debate with Fetterman and Oz, mm -hmm. it helped Fetterman. Mm. And I, I think this is the same type of like, and, and I was like a little bit surprised by that. But I think this one is sort of like right in that same alley where... They're going to harp on this and they're not going to hear any more than, you know, Elon Musk was aware that like, wait a second, maybe this could be a little trickier than I thought it was. Like <laughs> they, they're not going to hear what the American public is saying about this. And I think this is like the, uh, the, you know, and, and the Senate's not going to touch it. Like I bet you, you know, on some oh, level Mitch God. McConnell's like, thank God I don't have control over this <laughs> uh, because he would be forced to do those same yeah, hearings. He and um, and that would hurt them in, in, in 2024, without a doubt. But I think this is like the it, I, I, I got to imagine if I'm Joe Biden sitting in the way, I don't know if I personally Joe Biden, but if I'm Joe Biden's, it, 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 you know, coterie, I'm like going like, oh, my God, I hope they do this all, you know, 24 seven because we're not going to get any legislation passed anyways. And if if, you know, we can run against this, people forget this. Bill Clinton never had a higher approval rating. That's right. Then in 98, when they started to impeach him for that thing, mm -hmm. uh, for, for the Monica Lewinsky thing, he was up the highest he had ever been. You know, he had 68%. Gotten, it was he, he, I think he was at 73% in, in 98. I think that was his peak. And that was like almost like 15 points higher than he had been at any other point in his presidency. And it was a function of these hearings and this is like and 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 frankly you know clinton was he was he was a little bit slimy and mm. uh, you know uh, with with the stuff that he was doing but in this instance it's like biden's just like dealing with us with a son who is like wayward who and and let's be clear too like it's this is also the story of like a kid who lost his mom and his sister mm. at an early age and was stuck in a hospital for a couple and then lost his brother. Like, I, I don't know much about uh, Hunter Biden and I don't really frankly care, but if, if somebody wanted to make this guy out to be a sympathetic character, regardless of what he's done and Joe Biden to look sympathetic, like you couldn't, you couldn't really script it anymore than to have Marjorie Taylor green, 
you know, up there officiating, you know, like, and, and the days of them getting away with them being so hypocritical and the, the mainstream press pretending that this is legit. I feel like that's a bygone era. Well, we'll see about that, but you know, I don't know. They they are excited by wood. the prospect of all these investigations. I can tell. I can you can feel the excitement, kind of. Ooh, we got some sexy stuff coming. They love that. And the Hunter Biden story, the the underlying motivation here is that laptop, which had a bunch of dirty pictures on it. That's that's what the New York Post and what is all over. If you go on right wing. Uh, social media, that is what it's all about for them. The whole, you know, China and Burisma in Ukraine, that's the cover story. The real story is there's some dirty stuff. You know, it's, you know, it's him doing drugs and naked and with girls in, in a hot tub. I mean, that's, I'm serious. This is what they, they and you know, this is how they are. That's what's the, it's what motivated the Monica Lewinsky frenzy was the, the you know, the sexy, sexy. Mm -hmm. And, and by the way, the press, you know, gets into that too. I mean, they, they, they succumb to that. It's very, you know, it's sex scandals time. So I don't know what that has to do with Joe Biden, because I don't think he was in the hot tub with anybody, <laughs> but for, but it gives them a chance to kind of talk about this stuff, which really kind of gets them off. It's disgusting. And I agree with you. I don't think, you know, one of the things about this last election that kind of, you know, reassured me just a tiny bit, and I'm not reassured completely because it was a very close election. So the country is still very polarized and they're looking at totally. the numbers and more Republicans came out than Democrats. It just so happened that they didn't fall the right way in the Senate. But nonetheless, um, you know, I am slightly reassured by the fact that many of the most grotesque MAGA candidates went down. And I think it really came to what you just said about Fetterman. And it, it came to about in all these races that there's just a really kind of depraved, disgusting aspect to these people. And, and this whole, you know, part of this whole MAGA, you know, it's what Hillary said, you know, they're deplorable. And there was a sense of revulsion, I think, among a lot of people, maybe in the maybe some of these independents, maybe people who aren't just doctrinaire Republicans, you know, check off the, where there's an R. It just kind of went, you know, I can't take these people. I can't, you know, it, it grosses me out. This this just makes me, it turns my stomach. And this Hunter Biden thing is going to be that because it's exactly what you say. Here's Joe Biden, a very loving father, obviously. And every, that you know, you can say what you want about the guy, but don't say that he isn't. A, you know, a family man and a man who loves his family and they've had troubles. We know all about it. And Hunter's troubles are part of that family story going after Joe Biden on that. And basically, I think underneath it all, they're trying to get Joe Biden to cry. It's like Edmund Muskie back in the 1970s. They wrote that phony letter about his wife and sent it to the Manchester leader to get him to, you know, lash out and he supposedly cried on the on the on the front steps because it was an attack on his wife and that was the end of Edmund Muskie's presidential campaign you know this is the kind of thing they do this is but, called it's rat fucking and that's exactly what we're what we're dealing with but i think like you know my sense is i may be wrong about this but you know it was so lurid the story of of bill clinton you know, uh, getting, you know, uh, filleted in the White House and, you know, with the cigar and this and that. And yeah. and, and you remember this. What are we going to tell the children? That oh, was the yeah. big thing. What are we going to tell the children? How are we going to explain this? We are, th that was, that uh, literally, I mean, it was literally in a different century, but it feels like it was in a different century. Oh, sure in does. the sense that like, I don't think that people under the age of 40 today are going to look at any of those pictures from Hunter Biden and be like, this is no different than like, you know, like I got friends who text me this shit. Well, I mean, like, and, I, like, I mean, I, I think it's a totally different world, uh, uh, Heather, than you and I grew up in. Look at how Monica sure. Lewinsky is being framed versus when she was when you guys were covering it. Now she's like, people understand she was a victim. Yes, she was a victim. Mm -hmm. But like, the, I'm just saying like the, 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 the stories that were so titillating back then I don't think they have the same resonance with people under the age of 45 in this country that, 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 that they would have 30 years ago. And the other problem they have is that Joe Biden gets up there and cries about his kids. That's going to raise know. his approval rating by 10, 15 points. Like they're not going to make a titillating story about th this is where his 
like seemingly ancientness, you know, works to his benefit. Like you're telling me that like grandpa, you know, was like uh, condoning this stuff. I'm sorry. Like it's just, it's <laughs> not lining. It's just people. not lining up. The reason why it worked it even for the right. And it, like I say, um, uh, Bill Clinton's approval numbers were, were sky high after this. The reason mm -hmm. why it worked is because from day one, they were calling him slick Willie. Mm -hmm. That was like, that was built into the narrative of Bill Clinton that he was doing deceitful things, you know, and, and none of this, what's the narrative here that Joe Biden, that, that, you know, train track Joe is, is a secret, you know, multimillionaire and yeah. he's got all this like, you know, foreign money in his coffers that he's doing what with, I mean, what's, he's what's so, he going to spend so this money? When's he, he going to spend it? He sold the country out for his drug addled son is what the narrative is. And I just, you know, does any, when he was vice president, I mean, not even as president, I mean, this goes, you know, they, well, of course, I mean, look at, look at the Whitewater thing. They went back to Bill Clinton back in the 1980s to try and go after him. There, there's no statute of limitations when it comes to Republican investigations. So that won't stop them. But, but, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think this is all, but, but it, it titillates their people. There's something, this Hunter Biden scandal, if you're, if you look at right-wing media, they are obsessed with it. So obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with it. It is, it is beyond. Now, some of this is pay, is payback for Trump. You know, the, the 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 whole Russian Ukraine thing. You know, all of that. This, this there's a there's a little the vortex of this Hunter Biden story is around Ukraine and Burisma. Yep. Um, so that's part of it. It's payback for Trump. And you know, I'm sure Trump is totally you know. Thing. But you know, remember when we're talking about the sexy, sexy, we just had you know Trump. I mean, this is a guy who yeah. admitted on tape that he was grabbing women by the pussy. So, you know, let's not forget what we were dealing with here with that guy. I mean, there's 27. How many women? I don't know. Well, we won't be forgetting women. because Trump is going to be out there He's every there. single day. I know. So, you know, let's have some let's have some hearings on that. You know, they didn't do any hearings on Trump and his sexual you know, assault record, uh, which was probably a mistake. Actually, they probably should have done it. Um, they didn't do that. Um, but, you know, this is this is now part of our, you know, political discourse is this kind of stuff. And and, you know, so they had to give they had to they had to put that into the into the pot of things that they could criticize Joe Biden over. It can they can't criticize him and his marriage. There's no there's no sign that there's anything there. So they're going after his son to sort of even the score and keep this in mind the, almost everything they're doing. Everything they're doing is score evening. It is all about payback. Oh, Everything sure. that they're doing in this next Congress for investigations is payback for Donald Trump, including, I might add, this new one that came up yesterday that I was just really stunned to see. Marjorie Taylor Greene extracted a promise. Now, I call her the shadow speaker because that is what she is going to mm. operate as. And she's saying it pretty much openly that you know, she gave an interview to The New York Times and said, you know, Kevin, better be careful. I've got a lot of power and I'm ready to use it. And, you know, he needs to recognize what, you know, who I am. Now, keep in mind, this is she's still in her first term in Congress. So, you know, you talk about, you know, brass. I mean, this woman's got it. But she's she is there. She's given as many press conferences as Kevin McCarthy's given since the election. And so she's going to operate as a shadow speaker. And one of the things that she extracted from them yesterday was an investigation into Nancy Pelosi's handling of January 6th and the treatment of the January 6th persecuted prisoners. The political prisoners. The political yeah. prisoners. So, I mean, that's, you know, you can just see where we're going. And meanwhile, also, she gave another one who was saying that, you know, she's going to demand that they withhold all funding for Ukraine because they they haven't secured the border. Yeah. So uh, this uh, is where we're at. Leaving aside <laughs> the the sort of the, the merits associated with those three things, Hunter Biden, and, and, and they're also... That's their election interference, right? Because right. because the Hunter Biden story was not released. That's why Donald Trump lost to Joe exactly. Biden. Exactly. Honestly, there's there are people actually pushing this. That's what Blake oh, yeah. Masters was saying because he couldn't go full bore with saying they were. That's the Peter Thiel yeah. uh, crew. Mm -hmm. That's why you hear Glenn uh, Greenwald talk about it. Same thing. Yep. Uh, that suppression. That whole Peter Thiel crew came in with that uh, that brilliant idea.
Yeah. And then you have the um and you and you have um the the political prisoners and the Nancy Pelosi thing. Mm-hmm. And then maybe they'll come out and try and do some like trans uh, phobia because they still don't quite get it. Also, I mean, plans demic. Uh, they want to look into like the origins of COVID. As one that's of their Fauci too. They want to go after him. They'll use that as the the yeah. method to go after Fauci. Mm. I mean, honestly, if you and I were like you know like advise you know just sitting in if we were uh, uh, Joe Biden's advisors and we're like here are the four things that we could wish for that they will do for the next two years. Would it be any different? Like, like the idea of, of reminding people, like running on transphobia, which the, the American public is just given like a big, like, what is your, what are your problems? And, you know, and Joe and, and Hunter Biden, which couldn't make Joe Biden look more sympathetic. Nobody wants to talk about COVID anymore. Even with it still existing, nobody wants to talk about it anymore. And uh, the idea that like they're going to keep talking about January 6th in the absence of actual hearings, like what more could you want your opponents to do if you are the Democratic Party? I, I mean, it really is. It's 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 it is it's going to be amazing. I mean, it really is going to be uh, amazing to watch this short of like trying to repeal uh, the Affordable Care Act again. I right. honestly don't know what they could do. That would be sort of more out of touch with what what has to happen with them. Like, well, in the Senate, they wanted to, you know, wanted to, you know, and they've talked about the using the debt ceiling to cut Medicare and Medicaid and uh, Social Security. So that that'll be a big winner, too. That's that's, you know, that really good one. Keep keep that one up. People love it when you start talking about cutting those those programs, especially, you know, right now. And, and their own voters, you know, are really excited about that too, especially the ones who are over 65. So, you know, have at it, guys. But keep in mind that the overhang of all of this is the presidential race, which has already begun, of course. Right. And we have, you know, D- Donald Trump gave his soporific speech the other night. <clears throat> um, and, you know, so he's going to be demanding certain things and he's got a direct line to, to shadow speaker Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course, and also a direct line to Kevin McCarthy, who is also going to be dealing with people like, you know, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo and Mike Pence and the rest of this motley crew that thinks that maybe they can they can challenge Donald Trump. And those guys are going to want something different. You've got Chris Christie out there. You've got, you know, the sort of, you know, the team normal, uh, just whatever they are. And they, they want Kevin McCarthy to be more serious, right? So they're going to be pressing him to try and do things that are that are real. Um, you know, whatever, I don't know, tax cuts, uh, whatever, what else, what, whatever ideas that they have. So that the, the stress on him is going to be immense. And he has going to have, at best, maybe a three or four vote margin. And those people like Andy Biggs and Matt Gates and this group over on the on the right, they're all saying... I don't care. I'll blow the place up. Fine. Yeah. You know, Kevin, you let's let the Democrats have it. You know, I mean, they are very, very willing to do it. And then you have all these people. You can maybe you can tell me about these people from New York, these new Republicans up there. Right. I mean, they want to maintain kind of their seat. They feel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, New York 19th Molinari is going to have it by a skin of his teeth. And yep. uh, you, in the 17th, same thing, skin of their teeth. I mean, this there's going to be uh, if they, you know, maybe they don't want to have a, a second a term as a congressperson, but maybe. they would be one of the very unique Congress people who are like, mm-hmm. hey, I did it once and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> uh, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be really mm-hmm. I, I think it's going to be fascinating because I don't I don't I my my generic sense is always that the Republicans fall in line, but this there are so many cross currents and you know, Kevin McCarthy is no brainiac. And so it's not no. like this is a guy God, who's no. like, I got this, you know, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think you do buddy. And, mm-hmm. and so, and there's, and, and there's such like real agendas and um, there, there's a, there's a, a, a real struggle here that's going to happen. And it's going to mm-hmm. be interesting to see. And, and, and the only way they can avoid it, it seems to me, like an outward fighting in addition to the sort of the traps I think they're going to fall into is if they all fall in line with Donald Trump. I mean, that's the only right. way that they can right. avoid this Agreed. at all. 
And there's a lot of people who are very reluctant to do that because yeah. they've got their own branding to do. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, and it's, he's a loser. So, <laughs> and, you know, we'll talk about this too. Like, there's a great opportunity for Joe Biden to sort of like, now he doesn't have to wait for legislation to pass. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, sort of like alienating Joe Manchin. You can just go out there and uh, start doing stuff to the extent that he can with executive orders. And we'll see. But uh, I mean, that's what that's what Obama did in his yeah. sort of second term. And I feel like things have accelerated in such that this is almost equivalent to that. For Joe it worked Biden. well for him too. It did work well for Obama in the second term. I think he redeemed himself in many ways from some earlier missteps by doing yep. that. Uh, Heather Parton, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to R.M. Brown. Do, do we know exactly what his uh, YouTube channel is? Yeah, it's just R.M. Brown. It's his, it's his name. YouTube.com, yeah. R.M. Brown? I'll, I'll get the exact link, but it's okay. on the banner. It's R.M. Brown. All right. I'm a little suspicious. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I don't know. I just like, how did he get that? Like, uh, Well, we can ask him. We don't know if he has the URL. We that's yeah, nice. that's what I'm asking. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, R.M. Brown. We are back. Sam Cedar, Emma Vigland on the Majority Report. It is a pleasure to welcome to the program someone who uh, we have been getting uh, like extensive harassment from our audience for well, it feels like years hmm. uh, to have on the program. R.M. Brown. Um, uh, R.M., welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's targeted harassment. I, I That's how I refer to it. So it is it, well, it's been very successful. Now, to be fair to us, Bradley's been trying to get you on the show for what feels like almost a year, and you have been ignoring him. Wow. I that's that's called big timing. Yeah. And it's sort of a Hollywood show business tactic. Um, you kind of gotta, you know, show how cool you are. So I've been doing that um to try to make you guys, you know, really like, oh, we gotta get him now. So it worked. Can we admit that at least? It, it worked. I okay. mean, and I think uh, people are, you know, you, you're you're putting off those vibes still even now. Even it's intimidating. You, the I green know. screen is really what's doing it. Uh, and it's not I working. It's not working. It's not supposed to be green. God damn it! I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's what I was what? saying in the break. Like, you realize what's going to happen with that, right? Oh yeah. Like, you've been in this business long enough where you can't come on with an empty green screen, and you're going to be in big trouble. I was <laughs> going to mimic your guys' background with the tiles, but this, uh, what a disaster already. Did you not know that it wasn't working? Or did you think it was? Or No, I'm lying. I, I know it's a green screen. It's supposed oh, okay. to be. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so uh, let's start with this. Um, what, uh, uh, what does RM stand for? Um. It's just my name. My first name is Ryan, uh, and then M is my middle initial, and that, that's it. That's pretty much it. There's not much of an interesting story to that one, uh, so I apologize. To that. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. not nearly as interesting as uh, we thought we were led to believe. We thought it was like going to be a big oh. mystery. <laughs> yeah. How you led yourself to believe. I think. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but did I, was I the only one who led to, was led to believe that? Well, hey, on the way, bright side, there oh, there it is. Look at the that. Green. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, wow. There it is. I mean, you guys missed it, but you were, you guys were in the background. Matt, you were on camera. I'm sorry to tell you. Oh, we were? Yes, oh, you I were the green it. screen wow, background. I was looking at the wrong That's place. That's the clubhouse feel. They could put anything back there, right? So they could get me canceled, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They, they, mm -hmm. You, you could guys put the RNC put... convention sort of back Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> or worse some... things. Yeah, put worse things. You know, why not? Yeah. Um, and so, all right. So where, where, where did you come from RM? Like what, uh, um, like, I mean, I mean, you could tell us like, uh, geographically or psychographically yeah. or in any way. 
Uh, well, I, you know, I started a YouTube channel in, uh, in like during the pandemic, uh, the, the algorithm picked it up in like late 2020. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just kind of got started really, honestly, I think part of it is how I got in the algorithm was making fun of Tim pool, mm -hmm. uh, who I know you have some experience with, but for some reason, some Tim pool videos where I was just kind of making fun of him got. Uh, a lot of traction, and then I think the algorithm figured out who to show it to, and um, and I think that's how I started getting a little audience. Um, and yeah, but very inspired by the Majority Report. I've been following you forever. I mean, from the a AM radio days. So ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're down in, in in in. Are you in Texas? I'm in Austin. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Austin scene. Uh, is Joe Rogan now your new neighbor or something like that? Yeah, well, Joe Rogan is the new sort of, he just kind of moved in and he's sort of, we consider him the sort of mayor uh, kind of now. He, he, uh, weird, this is a weird, sort of a weird thing, not to call him out, okay? I don't want to get into that stuff, but um, has no, not you had a- that's not the, you don't, no, you don't traffic don't, in that kind of thing. No, I don't do traffic in that kind of crap, but he has not had any local Austin comedians on his show yet, I don't think, which is sort of like, you come into a town- you might want to get some of the locals on, right? But he hasn't done it. So, Joe, this is kind of why I came on the show today. Joe, get some local comedians on. Damn you, Joe. Come on. It, it, you know, what's interesting. Is I mean, Austin is where... Is, it, is not Austin where... Um, uh, uh, no. Well, so I know South by Southwest is there. But um, where uh, Alex Jones started. Yeah, definitely. In fact... Uh, when I first I moved I moved here a long time ago and one of the big Infowars was one of the big employers. I mean, my main thing is video editing. And I had a you know, like it was one of the the places where you could actually make a decent living, you know, as a you know, a entry level position video editor. So a lot of people I've kind of known a lot of people who actually work for in Infowars. And I wish I think I actually applied at one point to try to be a <laughs> video editor there. And I, it would have been great. It would have been great. It would have been great story. for now. Like we would have been able to mine you for content. No, taking the job too. They just never, they never reached, they never contacted me. I didn't make it past the, you know, the, 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 uh, application phase. They probably just, you know, you didn't, uh, meet the lizard person criteria or something like that. Yeah, I think I didn't. I I put in the I put in the application that I'm not into, you know, snake oil supplements. So I shouldn't I shouldn't have put that. You know, That's a big up. mistake. Um, yeah. And so, um, how do you know the songs to that Lee Greenwood song? Uh, how do you know the words to that Lee Greenwood song? I was watching you cover uh, Trump's um, uh, what is it? His press conference, I guess, or yeah. whatever his announcement. And do you see well, really? Well, it's a beautiful song, right? right? I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful song, and it's, uh, I don't know, it's, its um, I don't want to say moving, but it is moving, you know? It's its kind of a touching, it's a touching song. Actually, can I can I say something really quick? Sorry, just to ch I mean, change gears you can, really quick. You can do it in any way you want. Uh, that's what, that's you what can we say it really slowly, here. too. <laughs> I was listening to the... Uh, the Digby interview. I love her, by the way. I think uh, I always I always get something out of those interviews. Um, but I wanted to mention the Nancy Pelosi thing. Uh, I think there's a, a thing you guys didn't touch on, which uh, is, I don't know, it, it's sort of sad to see her step down. And I think what people never don't really mention, don't really consider is the um, is the we is the 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 kneeling with the quinte cloth thing? Do you guys remember right. that? Yes, I do remember that. Right, we've all tried to make sure that that does not that image is not in our minds at the forefront. We've repressed it. Yes. I've seen car accident scenes that I've wanted to that I'm willing to remember more than that. Well, I think you know it's funny you say that because I think one thing that we can say that she did for us, for people like me especially, is that really meant a lot to people in the uh, publicly embarrassing themselves community, uh, which I'm a, a part of. Uh, I've been doing that for a while, and I just, I, I feel like we should not forget that. I know, mean, that representation that matters. Solidarity it with matters. people. Representation exactly. matters, right. Yeah, we, we don't talk about that enough. Solidarity with people who step on a rake uh, yeah. on national television, essentially. <laughs>
you pull those like I've I've heard uh, R.M. Brown that you ha like pull certain moments from people's speech and you have a oh, soundboard boy. of sorts. And this is where Emma like uh, <laughs> like. It's my villain turn, but I'm included in this. Is what I is what the the tweeters have told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, like at least, like I have a little soundboard to try to make it like you know a, a drive time radio type show that I you know have samples of you know Alex Jones Sam's and all this. Cry. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we could have maybe a little competition. Mm. Absolutely, but at least once a week, once or twice a week, people. <laughs> People send me, people send me timestamps of either Sam or Emma saying something completely out of context. It's usually something that could be interpreted in some horrible way, and <laughs> it's it, one at least once or twice a week I get one, and they're like, "Add this to the soundboard." But I think the Emma one, you're just saying, <laughs> you're saying, "Wipe your ass with them." Mm, uh, I good. don't even remember what it, you're referring to. Good. But My it, parents it are very proud of me. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But it works for so many things. Mm. It works for so many things. Hey, uh, just getting some uh, breaking news. Speaking of soundboard, um, make sure we confirm this. But it looks like uh, Lauren Boebert uh, is one that, that, that Matt Frisch conceded. Yeah. Uh, in the third district. I mean, that was, you know, there was a couple of seats where there was no sense. Or at least the 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 conventional wisdom that certain candidates didn't have an opportunity to win, and so there was no funding, no support that was given. It. That that was a race that obviously, with a little bit of uh, more support, um, that wasn't even on my radar. No, nope, not at all. And there's a couple other uh, seats like that. I feel like uh, that have have, have have popped up. But uh, all right, forgive that. Uh, uh, my the the use of the soundboard. No, no, the conversation that's... was too important, and I was I couldn't help myself. Um, no, no, that's that's a tr a true queen has uh, regained her throne. Yes, thank God. Do you guys I have wonder, like, an applause? I wonder if uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is bummed about that. Oh. Uh, I wonder if she's bummed. Yeah, because she, she, is, she like, is, doesn't like get to little... be the queen bee. You, yeah, well, she, mm. she's still the queen bee, but she's you know like you don't want anybody else out there taking away attention. Mm. And if, if honestly, I mean, don't you get the sense that the the RM that the they're that they, they're competing for that kind of vibe? I mean, yeah, right. You can't be watching Bobert and Marjorie Taylor Greene at the same time. You, you need to either watch one or the other, and so they're at each other's expense. Yeah, it waters it down. You know, I'm more of a. I think I'm more of an MTG guy. You know, Lauren Boebert, she's sort of a, you know, it's like when MTG's not around, you go Boebert, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it kind of it kind of waters the whole thing down. So. I missed this from April 20, 29th of uh, this year. Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene got into such a heated confrontation that another lawmaker had to step in Woo! to intervene. Is that right? Yeah, this is, this is, uh, Cat fight. This, this is from I Business can say Insider. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Emma can say that. Uh, um, uh, 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 Representative Lauren Boebert privately dislikes being associated with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Well, now she's not associated with her in Congress. Well, isn't um, that interesting, though, that the, sorry to cut you off, Matt, but like the squad, they try to behave as a unit and like marjorie taylor green and bobert just don't seem to have any well, yeah i never saw i never saw this coming but the two republicans recently got into this is recently as of april got into a heated exchange over green's attendance at a white nationalist event the political report examines splits within the house freedom caucus a conservative so that's political so who knows so wait a second so bobert like bobert like, was upset that marjorie taylor green did like the fuentes crap i think so, uh, i'm uh, i'm shocked that bobert well, <laughs> but you're assuming that she wanted her not to attend. Yeah. And maybe she is, was is it that, that she wasn't invited? Er she left yeah. early. <laughs> or right. that she, she didn't invite Bober to exactly. come with her. Yeah. yeah. Probably, yeah, was that she was not the plus one. That was the. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got bumped uh, yeah, exactly. because Marjorie Taylor Greene went over on her time and Bobert <laughs> didn't get, like, didn't you see the freaking light? <laughs> hey, give me a spot. Give me a spot on that Nick Fuentes uh, thing. What you um, do a couple minutes? So you 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 had some success with with Tim Pool. Give me like give me a sense of what what it is you think like a like what is his allure? But what is it that people like in terms of uh uh you know I don't know uh 
in in parsing who Tim Pool is? Oh, man, it, it's baffling. It's really baffling. I mean, when I started the channel, I was sort of because I didn't watch a lot. I I knew, like, I knew I was aware of Ben Shapiro and his brand, and kind of aware of Tim Pool, but I wasn't really aware like what they really do day to day. And I'm, it's shocking. Like it's shocking that people watch that stuff. Like, honestly, and Tim pool is one of the most baffling ones. Like I do, I cannot wrap my head. I cannot wrap my head around what people get out of that. Do I, you I do. Wa watch on a regular basis? Do you watch yeah. him like on a regular basis? Like you'll watch full shows because we, at this point, you know, like I, I just, I don't, I don't have the time, but I also don't know that I have the mental constitution. Oh God. Really? Like, oh, it, God. but you're young. You're, you know, you're, you're, you have resiliency. You, you still have neuroplasticity <laughs> in your, in your brain. Uh, and so you watch, like, you, will you sit down and watch like a full Tim Poole show? It, I, I've done it. I've done it multiple times. I've done it. You and speed I it think up? I speed it up. Okay, right. yeah. Th uh, there's no way that you can't speed. The, the... Are people watching that at one x? Oh my god! Could yeah, you imagine? Man. Jeez. But yeah, like it's it's like uh, just one example off the top of my head. The last video that I did, he was uh, like like he he was talking about the student debt thing, and 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 w when that came out. He was like, this is going to ruin the economy. Like he was he was saying all the things that Republicans are saying about the student debt. It's going to ruin the economy. It's unfair. Da, da, da. Then now he gets back on video like just, you know, when when they were like, oh, when it's when it got blocked, basically. And he gets he gets on his camera and he's like, I knew this was going to happen the whole time. I knew they were going to buy. I knew this was never going to go. Like, it's that kind of thing. It's just like, how does he get? A, I, it's honestly like, how does he get away with it? Is is right. what, what it is. You know, what I mean? we, well, we have the same thing with uh, let's do this. Let's let's play this. Um, uh, 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 Dave Rubin. Do we have that? Do, do we do grab that Dave Rubin oh, clip? Great. Oh, great. So we played a clip of Dave Rubin. Yesterday with all of his absolutely wrong like <laughs> I like saw honestly that. like yep. it, you know I it, it would be hard to sort of say like i'm gonna try and like it, you know like i'm gonna bet somebody that i can't get it wrong in every instance and he came up with it uh, wrong he was wrong in every instance and um here's another clip where now he's like almost like in a way and the, and to be fair, this is this is clipped together from you know his entire show. Dave so, Rubin clips on yeah, Twitter. Dave Rubin clips on on what used to be called Twitter, and um, <laughs> but here is uh, here is Dave Rubin now, sort of like processing how wrong he was. But you, if you catch this, he's he's sort of slightly blaming some conventional narrative that set him astray. Here we oh go. Oh boy. Yes, without question. The massive red wave that so many predicted did not happen. I kept saying all along, while I think it is going to happen, you never know what ha is going to happen and you cannot count your chickens before they hatch. And clearly there was some chickens being counted uh, before they were hatched uh, by the mainstream punditry. And you. Pause it for a second. Let's, let's, be, let's be clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> the, he had not only counted chickens. He had built uh, specific, like separate coops for each one of those chickens. He's in, he was in D.C. I think he may, maybe I don't know if it's in this clip, but elsewhere in the show, he admits that he's in D.C. It was expecting like a triumphant atmosphere of like a restoration. <laughs> he he not only got coops for those chickens, he sold the eggs. Yes, that those chickens were supposed to lay. Like yep. six months out, like he had already supplied different uh, supermarkets around the country with all the eggs. Got some egg futures you can yes, buy. Yes, I've counted them. I've counted them. I've divided them. I've actually sold off securities based upon them. I have sold options on the eggs. I've sold futures on the chickens. I have uh, I have named the chickens. And in fact, I I have actually like dedicated part of my backyard to the chicken coops for these chickens. He I mean, pan seared. He, he pan seared those chickens. I've already heated up all the pans. I've got. <laughs> I've greased all the things. I've got different <laughs> menus. I've got all the. Uh, the uh, I mean, it really. This guy. Uh, continue. This is awesome. 
saying all along, while I think it is going to happen, you never know what ha is going to happen and you cannot count your chickens before they hatch. And clearly there was some chickens being counted uh, before they were hatched uh, by the mainstream words. punditry. The, the Pennsylvania situation, uh, obviously, they, first off, their voting situation is very bizarre. They had a mm. ton of early mail-in ballots. Look, it makes all the sense in the world that Oz would have won, but he didn't. And, and it was, <laughs> you know, about a five-point differential, which... Pennsylvania, man, like, I, I don't know what to tell you. We, maybe we just have to accept that 40%, I mean, I was sort of pulling that number out of thin air, but mm. that X amount of people are always going to vote Democrat no matter Pause what. Pause it for one second. This is, this is, this is quite a, an understanding of American politics that uh, Dave Rubin has stumbled onto, that 40% of people are going to vote for Democrats. There has not been a presidential election in... 50 years where 40% of the, the public did not vote for the Democrat. Like, I mean, it's just like a, he has not been alive when a national uh, a Democrat has gotten less than 40% of the vote. He's just not been alive since then. I think the last one was like maybe McGovern. I don't know. In Mondale, uh, probably still got over 40% of the vote. It really is. It is amazing that this guy can actually like dress himself in the morning. <laughs> It's. It, do you find it funny that they never really talked about Dr. Oz that much either? It was all about how bad Fed, Fetterman was because he had a temporary disability. Did you notice that? That it was not, they weren't like, oh, Oz is awesome. Like most of them that I watched just didn't talk it. They were just like, it, they were basically just like, hey, this guy sucks. Let's not talk about him. Let's just talk about how bad this other guy is. I think that was a function of Fetterman defining Oz very early on and it became a lost cause like you couldn't and then the the crudite moment uh crudite <laughs> gate uh that mm. was a uh, crudite gate uh was just <laughs> really sunk him but let's let's listen more to Dave Rubin um yes just struggle struggle with this first off very bizarre all of these people voting early and mailing them in so bizarre a certain amount of people are brainwashed. Uh, you know, the other thing that sits behind all of this is that this, this young generation now, unless we can red pill them really fast, they're being born in a world where they accept government mandates, where they accept putting masks on and when they can go to school and when they can and being online all the time and being given all this stuff. That's not a great uh, indicator of future freedom, right? Mm, I mean... It is weird how this generation, it's like, uh, you know, accept these things that from this once in a lifetime pandemic. <laughs> uh, and I, what, let, our, 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 let me ask you this. What's future freedom? Future freedom. Oh, my God. I think it's it's a, a, a concept that people like me and you can't. You know, th these are what he calls high level ideas. And it's sort of like it's a, it's like a tone we can't hear basically it's exactly only, it's it's only for high level people and we're just not in that community so we got to kind of just uh, live in this sort of lower uh kind of lower consciousness i think is what it is that's how i would refer to it as when you mock all these people what what is like what is your agenda do you have like a like do you have like a mission uh, statement for your show no like honestly I, and i and i don't say this to blow smoke but when i was younger when i was you know in in college I was, you know, uh, late teens, early 20s. There was none of this stuff, right? Like back then when you and Janine were doing AM radio, there was not, I mean, you could read a Chomsky book or whatever, but there was not, I mean, there was not a lot of this, you know? And so, I mean, my agenda, I guess, is just that it, it seems like it's great that everybody can, you know, respond to this stuff. Um, because when I was, you know, younger, it, it just didn't exist except for you, you know, you and Janine Garofalo and it, like uh, uh, me and a lot of my friends really clung to that, you know, cause there was not a, uh, not a lot of it. So I just, I don't know. I feel lucky to be able to respond to this stuff and, and upload it. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's awesome. Very, that's uh thank you. That's very nice. Yeah. Very nice of you yeah. to, there to you point out. That's yeah. really makes our uh makes our uh telling you that we're filing copyright notices against you that much more more, oh, more yeah. uncomfortable mm. um awkward
uh, uh, Aaron is not cool on our IM says, uh, where are your glasses? Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't want to wear glasses. Uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. It seems I already big timed enough on the, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the, he the felt like if he came on with the sunglasses, it would be a little bit, a little bit of a, right. You're, you're, it's a, yeah. You're too, it's a, you don't, you want us to be able to relate to you, right? You don't want right. to be so cool that it's just like difficult for us to have a conversation. Yeah. That's the thing about coolness is that you, if you want it to be a little bit attainable. If mm -hmm. I, you, if somebody has glasses on, it's just, it's too, it's too cool. You know, yeah, that's, no, I, yeah. I believe me. I know what you're yeah. saying. Um, well, uh, RM, uh, uh, your stuff is very funny. I, uh, I, 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 I kept listening over and over again to your, uh, on the, on the last video you did about the, the, the Lee Greenwood, uh, just because I, I hadn't seen the full conference and I didn't know he was going up to that, which is, <laughs> we should say that's Sean Hannity. Hmm. That's the mm. Sean Hannity influence. Like Lee Greenwood was Sean Hannity's thing. And, um, God, that was a, a really, that was like a post 9-11. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it has that vibe. It has that post 9-11. We'll put uh, a boot in your ass. Boot in your you ass. Know, gonna, yeah. like, I mean, just, just, oh my God. <laughs> um, uh, American flag sticker on the car kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Never forget kind of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, folks, where, you're on, on, on YouTube. But where else do you, I assume? Um, I'm I'm on uh, I'm on YouTube. It's R M Brown. I was on Twitter, but you know, that's I think that's that, that so happen anymore. I, I think there's a real reason to believe that that Twitter's not going to be functioning. We're gonna get it. Let's go, we're gonna get a Twitter break, and it's probably <laughs> right. gonna exist. You know, exist for like a couple of days. Yeah. Then maybe it comes back on, and it's sort of like it's gonna be like what. Twitter, like what the internet's going to feel like, it, you know, maybe, maybe during like a climate crisis type of thing where like, oh, well, the, the power is out and the, the servers have crashed because of the heat. And sometimes Twitter works and sometimes it doesn't. It's going to be that type of thing. <laughs> it's like the power here in Texas. It'll be like, that's, exactly. That's cool. Yeah. I love Apt. it. Beautiful. Um, and uh all right so folks we'll put a link uh to your uh channel but uh Aaron brown real real pleasure glad we we finally made this happen i hope to do it again soon love you guys i i watch the show every day and thanks so much for having me all right thanks for coming thanks on. so much all Bye. right folks uh it is that time where we will now uh head into the fun half we're gonna be we're gonna be uh having fun uh, Illuminati kids, how happy is Sam that RM doesn't rate Mark Marin or any other America, Air America hosts? I mean, extremely happy. Uh, <laughs> that's why RM was on for so long. I got one button right over here that disconnects anybody who talks who talks uh, well about Mark Marin. That's the way it works. Uh, An eject button. It's like it's the eject button. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, just a reminder, it's your support that helps this show uh, survive and thrive. You can become a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. When you do, you not only support the free show, you get the free show for your commercials. And then you get the fun half. And then on the newly constructed app, which I think is available now in stores, like literally um, in, oh. uh, in the, uh, the app store right now, I think you can update it if you already have the app. Mm. Yeah, is it? Okay, there we go. Look at it. Look at, look at this thing. Look at this. Uh, dark mode oh, and light mode. Oh, you got the dark mode. mode and the light mode. Oh, that's how, look at how that, fortuitous. huh? I can't yeah. do anything on a dark mode. I just don't do that. But here's the thing. Watch this. This is what I, I find amazing about this. And we are, we are building more and more tags. So you're going to be able to go deep. But still, you can still... Uh, let's... Uh, give me a word. Give me something. Um, torts. Torts. All right. Yeah, there we go. I'm Torts. Like, any word. I'm like, oh. All right. There it is. Here it is. And look at this. All the stuff. Oh, it's, we got um, the importance of insects. Or, uh, uh, Juneteenth. What? What? There's, uh, we got the Mass Torts Conference. There you go. And then uh, Torts came up in all of those situations. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but this is a great way to search back. Oh, le how about a, ga a guest? Let's say... Stephanie Kelton. Okay. We haven't had her on in a while. Kelton and go. And then I don't even, I didn't even have to, uh, what happened? 
And here's what's cool too is that the merch you can just press merch yeah. and then it's right there. Look at that. Yeah. Easy access. Stephanie. I want that red sweatshirt. We got to work on the uh, on the tagging a little bit here. Okay, there we go. Stephanie Kelton. Um, we got uh, the deficit myth. Uh, what you think of you know about money is wrong with Stephanie Kelton. The debt crisis is a myth. Modern monetary theory. Stephanie Kelton. Uh, net roots. Stephanie Kelton was a guest on there. Stephanie Kelton, what you think you know about money? All the times that she shows up, all the way back to 2012. Look at that. So I anyways, if you're a member and you're logged in, you not only can I am the show, you also um, can search the entire archives. I think you can search the archives even if it's uh, your freebie, but I don't know if it's going to go back and, uh, as much. So check it out. You can also get to the merch that way. You can get to the Discord channel that way. You can get to our soon-to-be uh, TikTok channel that way. You oh. can get to our Instagram and our Facebook and our what used to be our Twitter channel. Uh, and whatever is happening, you could sign up for the AM Quickie. One. Are you going to be doing the gritty on TikTok? I, I, I'll, I'll look it up and see what it is. And then if it's appropriate for me to do, I will do it. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Emma, what's happening on the uh, ESVN? <laughs> Saul might like that one. Um, uh, I, on ESVN, Bradley and I gave our picks, and I'm already up because I picked on Thursday Night Football and the Titans won. Very fun for me. My comeback begins today. Uh, check that out, youtube.com slash ESVN show. We're still figuring out how we're going to work next week because of the Thanksgiving schedule, but uh, we'll make sure to have two episodes for you. There you go. Uh, Matt, what's happening in the Matt Leck Media world? In Matt Leck Media, uh, we got um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Left Reckoning. We're going to do uh, well. First of all, I was on two podcasts. Um, the Vanguard show has already aired. I was on the with the Vanguard boys, Zach and Gavin, uh, yesterday, and I will be on the Varn vlog. I'm not sure when that's coming out with the Derek oh. Varn. And f uh, I'm talking with Jacob Silverman about uh, some. Uh, SBF, Sam Bankman Fried stuff, but also the um, venture capitalists and uh, behind a lot of this stuff. So uh, check that out, patreon.com slash left reckoning uh, this weekend. All right, folks. Uh, see you in the fun half. You right. are in for it. All right, folks. 646-257-3920. See you in the fun half. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are you ready? What, who sent us this? Dan, 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 Dan alpha males are back, 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 boy is back, and the alpha males are back, back, just as delicious as you could imagine. The alpha males are back, 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 boy is back, and the alpha males are back, 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 back. Just wanna degrade the white man. Alpha males are back, back. I take